Okay, folks, let's wrap up by talking about molecules that do redox reactions. And as a bit of foreshadowing here, keep in mind that we're not going to fully understand why these molecules are considered high energy until we discuss the electron transport chain and synthesis of ATP. And that is okay. So we'll just be comfortable now being a little bit uncomfortable until we finish learning what we need to know about these molecules. So these redox molecules, to remember some of the vocabulary we learned, are often considered coenzymes. The other word for them, cofactors. They are used in metabolism for oxidizing carbons, for reducing oxygen, for releasing energy. And the primary ones we're going to see, although there are others, are NADH. NADPH and FADH2. On the left hand side I have structures of NAD and NADPH. The only difference between NAD and NADPH is the one with the P. NADPH has one additional phosphate coming off of the ribose sugar on its structure. Now FADH2 has quite a different structure as you can see. It has this conjugated system, which looks larger and different than what we're seeing with NADH. Let's talk about the types of uh, reduction and oxidation that these molecules do. So NADH transfers A unit of hydride. Hydride is your hydrogen with two electrons. And it is able to transfer this unit of hydride because of the resonance in its structure. Now this is different from what FADH2 does. FADH2 transfers two hydrogen radicals. So this is a hydrogen with a single unpaired electron. And you can see that its structure is conjugated and pretty extensively resonance stabilized, right? And it transfers, boop, one, two units of the hydrogen radical. But you can see that both molecules transfer to electrons. They just do it differently. And so receiving and giving of electrons here, reduction and oxidation, can be a high energy event, can release energy, can be spontaneous. OK, we can understand. I'm sorry, my picture is blocking this on the slide. We can understand that energy can be released or absorbed by this equation on the top right. Don't worry, we don't need this for math, but I'm showing it to you so you understand that reduction potential, uh, which is this delta E on the right that my face is blocking, is directly linked to Gibbs free energy. Okay, And what we're going to see is that we'll have a negative delta G when the electron acceptor has a high electron affinity or a positive reduction potential and the electron donor has a weak affinity for those electrons or a negative reduction potential. So we'll understand that the electrons flow spontaneously, spontaneously, negative delta G, same thing, 
when the electrons are going from a negative to a positive reduction potential. And that is kind of just a rule that's more challenging to understand. So we're going to have a favorable redox reaction when the electrons are going from something that is pretty good at giving those electrons away to something that's going to want to grab on to those electrons that has a high affinity for those electrons. And so we can use this rule here that I have on the slide to help us know when redox reactions are favorable. Things at the top of this chart, like oxygen, are really, really great at taking electrons. They want to grab up those electrons. And things at the bottom want to give away their electrons. Said another way, things at the top of the chart can oxidize things below them. Things on the bottom of the chart can reduce things above them. Said just one more way, folks, because I know there's a lot of ways to think about this, and some will be better for some of you than others. Things on the top are good. are good oxidizing agents. Or it's favorable for them to be reduced. And things on the bottom can reduce things above them, which means they are good reducing agents which means that they themselves are favorable to be, oops, my pen is too far down, oxidized. Come on, pen, you can do it. As long as we keep that in mind, we will understand when redox is favorable. And we'll get some practice for this together. What we learned today, folks, let's not forget that thermodynamics and kinetics aren't the same. So we've kind of learned about enzymes and how they work, but we also need to understand kind of energetically, will an enzyme reaction proceed, yes or no, based on how much energy is being released or absorbed. Let's also recall that something that's favorable to happen won't necessarily happen in our bodies without that enzyme because we need that biological catalyst. There are three types of bonds that we talked about today in class and we learned why the molecules or the bonds themselves are considered high energy. In the future, but starting now, we should be able to predict, to predict why redox and when redox is favorable. With that, I'll leave you with your cat meme.